Hello and welcome to this presentation related to free body diagrams. This presentation overviews the use and construction of free body diagrams and highlights their importance in the analysis of mechanical and structural engineering problems. This presentation does make reference to other presentations related to Newton's laws of motion, friction considerations on both horizontal and inclined planes, and also the analysis of beams subject to bending. Here's an overview of the presentation. Essentially, this presentation consists of three distinct parts. In part one, we define free body diagrams and outline the various requirements and characteristics for their construction. In part two, we consider an array of examples of free body diagrams. And most of these free body diagrams relate to topics that we've considered in separate presentations. And finally, and this is purely for reference, there are further examples of free body diagrams, but these now relate to industrial applications, industrial analyses. I've just added section three if you're interested to see some actual analyses that have been undertaken within industry and the associated free body diagrams. Although from my experience, most students find it quite difficult to construct free body diagrams and sometimes try to ignore them completely, but I would strongly encourage you whenever you're undertaking an analysis in mechanical or structural engineering to consider the free body diagram for the particular situation you're analyzing. They are essential to the analysis because if the free body diagram is wrong, if for example a force becomes forgotten from the free body diagram, then the rest of the analysis is totally irrelevant. And I've had a situation myself in industry when I was a junior engineer where I, I, I undertook analysis that lasted at nearly a week and it was only on the fifth day that I realized the analysis was completely wrong because on day one on my free body diagram I had omitted a particular force. So my analysis unfortunately had to be reworked. So do consider free body diagrams at the beginning of all your analysis work, but also think them through carefully to make sure that you do include all the forces that are applied and the exact reactive system for the component or structure. So think free body diagram. And here are the approximate timings related to the three sections in this presentation to aid your ease of access through the presentation. Let's overview free body diagrams. So free body diagrams, FBDs for short, also termed force diagrams, are commonly used within mechanics and structural analysis as they aid understanding of the forces acting on a body be the body stationary or moving with constant velocity, what's termed a static analysis, where the body is in equilibrium, or where the body is changing its motion, for example, accelerating, in what's termed a dynamic analysis. Free body diagrams show vector quantities, typically applied forces or loads, moments, reactions, and can indicate the resulting actions on the body, for example, the velocity, the acceleration, etc. The body being analysed may be of complex shapes, multiple parts, for example, an aircraft, a bridge structure, a roof truss, or it can be more simple structures, such as a free body diagram of a single floor beam or a single column. Within some analyses, more than one free body diagram may be required to help analyze or solve the complex problems. But note, free body diagrams are not often drawn to scale and they can be modified as the problem being considered is progressively analyzed and ultimately solved. Free body diagrams can consist of the following entities. Firstly, a free body diagram is a simplified depiction of a body using a simple sketch with all the forces included. And the free body diagram shown here, our body is our train. We have force P applied to the train, causing its motion. 
And then we also have force R resisting the motion. So those are the two forces applied to the body. We can apply Newton's second law here and determine the acceleration of the train in this particular case. Forces or applied loads are depicted as straight arrows. They're pointing in the direction that they act on the body. Horizontal force shown here, vertical force shown here, or inclined force shown here. Moments, these are shown with curved arrows, point in the direction that the moment acts on the body. Or a sagging beam here, we have the applied moments to the body, clockwise and anti-clockwise shown arrows. And also on free body diagrams, we have a reference or coordinate axis system. This can be an inertial axis system, that's considered usually fixed to the ground, or a body fixed axis, an axis actually on the body itself. For the coordinate system used, we have to clearly indicate the positive notations in the X, Y, and also sometimes the Z direction if it's a three dimensional problem. So for the illustration here, on the right hand side for inertial axes, we're showing positive x values from left to right, positive y values vertically up. Free body diagrams continued. Sometimes reactions to applied loading are shown with hash marks through the stem of the arrows. For example, considering this vertical force shown here, the hash mark through the stem, indicating it's a reaction. For this moment, or couple, denoted by this curved arrow, here again is the hash mark, denoting it's a reactive moment. This is sometimes found within beam analysis, such as that shown here on the right-hand side, this prop cantilever beam, where we have applied load in here, 1,500 newtons, 3,000 newtons, and the UDL of 500 newtons per meter. So these are applied load in, to the beam and then the reactions to the beam are indicated with the hash marks so this vertical reaction at the wall labeled rw1 here has a hash mark the reactive moment mw1 in the wall has a hash mark and so does the prop reaction r2 here have a hash mark the diagram below here is a simply supported beam with applied load here and reaction shown here again with the hash mark on the reactions. So these hash marks are sometimes added to reactive systems where the engineer wants to clearly annotate the reactions. Free body diagrams continued. Note within beam analysis, the beam's weight is often considered negligible compared to the beam's applied loading. For example, from wind loading, from snow loading, etc. So often, the beam's weight is not included in the free body diagram. Again, considering our prop cantilever beam for illustration, these are the applied loads, and there could be an applied load to the beam from the beam's weight, but very often the beam's weight is assumed negligible, as it's a very small proportion of the applied loading. Free body diagrams continued. So the number of forces and moments shown on a free body diagram depends on the specific problem and the assumptions made. For example, air resistance may be neglected, but sliding friction may be included. Also, it's very important to note that the free body diagrams assume the bodies considered are rigid. In other words, the bodies do not deform under the applied load. So here's a free body diagram related to constant velocity, V here of our vehicle. We show applied load P here, a resisting force shown here. We're indicating our positive direction here. We could apply Newton's first law of motion to this problem. Summation of all the forces is equal to zero because we're moving at constant velocity. And just note for reference, we do not need the complicated picture of the car. The free body can simply be a rectangular block. And applied to the car, we may also have another force, maybe a friction force of contact of tyres with the 
ground could be included. So again, the number of forces we apply to our free body depends on the specific problem and the analysis we're undertaking. We will still equate the forces to zero in this case because the situation analysed here is at constant velocity. So that's a brief introduction to free body diagrams. We're now going to consider an array of examples to illustrate the variety of free body diagrams you may encounter within your studies or within industry. So here are some examples of free body diagrams, some of which we'll have seen in separate presentations, for example, related to Newton's laws of motion, friction on inclined plane, beams in bending, etc. So here are some free body diagrams. These are examples. So on the left hand side here, we have a free body diagram of an accelerating rocket, accelerating vertically upwards here. So all our forces are applied here the rocket. Our inertial axes are shown here, positive notation. And to analyze this problem, we would apply Newton's second law, summation of all the forces equals to ma, to calculate the acceleration. Here's another free body diagram, this time of a ladder. Here's the ladder resting against the wall. The man stood near the top of the ladder. So consider a static equilibrium problem this time, it's a stationary problem. We will draw a free body diagram. So here are the applied forces, the force from the man, which is mass times gravity. Also the weight force of the ladder itself, applied through the CG of the ladder. And then we have the reactive forces from the wall at the top of the ladder, shown horizontally here. The horizontal frictional force at the bottom of the ladder and the vertical reaction again from the frictional effects at the bottom of the ladder. We could if we wanted to put hashes through these reactions, it's not essential but we could add the hash. And of course there could even be another force here at the top of the ladder, friction effects again due to contact with the wall. So we could have a, another frictional force here in the vertical sense. And again we have our inertial axes shown here showing the positive x and y directions and to solve for the unknown reactions we would apply the equations of static equilibrium effectively applying Newton's first law to analyze the ladder in equilibrium. Free body diagram examples continued. Here's an aircraft in steady level flight so that's again considered static equilibrium because it's not accelerating, has a constant velocity. And again, the free body shows all the forces acting on the body. This is a simplified analysis here, but it still indicates how, how the free body diagram is used. In the horizontal direction, we have the thrust applied, which for steady level flight will be equal to the aerodynamic drag. And we have the weight force of the aircraft balanced by the lift from the wings. Again we have our inertial axis system shown here. This would again be a Newton's first law problem to analyse. Summation of all the forces in any direction equals to zero. Free body diagram examples continued. Here's a free body diagram of an aircraft accelerating across the runway. Example we considered in a previous presentation related to Newton's laws of motion. In this case, we have an applied force, P, thrust from the engines. We're informed that the aircraft is accelerating, 1.5 meters per second squared here. And the question wants us to find the resistance to the motion using Newton's second law. Again, we have our inertial axis stated here, showing the positive directions. Free body diagram examples continued. So this is a free body diagram of an accelerated vehicle, but we're applying D'Alembert's principle here. This is a concept we reviewed in a separate presentation. This time we have our two body fixed axes shown here. These X and Y axes are moving with the body. So when we consider the forces applied here, we've got the accelerating force F applied to the body Friction effects are not considered here, but because we're applying D'Alembert's principle, we 
we have to include the inertia force, the MA force, on our free body. So to solve this problem using D'Alembert's principle, it will be summation of all the forces applied to the body minus the inertia force, often termed a compensating force or a fictitious force. And that equals to zero. So applying D'Alembert's principle means we can analyse a dynamic situation, the acceleration of the car here, as a static situation. Engineers often like applying D'Alembert's principle. Free body diagram, examples continued. Here's an extract from a previous presentation related to our simple friction model. This is the elementary model used to analyze friction effects. This is the limiting condition where we have an applied force, P, to our body shown here of mass M. We generate a weight force on Earth, W equals mg. And our model then reacts these applied forces with the friction force, which is in the opposite direction to the applied force P. And we have a normal force, that's the reaction to the weight force from the surface that the body is resting on. Again, we have our positive axis direction shown here. And as this is the limiting condition, when the body is just about to move horizontally over the surface, we would apply Newton's first law, summating all the forces equals to zero. Free body diagram examples continued. This slide shows what are termed plane trusses, two dimensional trusses here. These truss members, shown by the lines here, can only withstand tension or compression loading. For the left hand truss here, we have applied loading shown here. Loads being reacted by reactions RL and RR shown here. For the right hand truss, we have an applied loading through the two tonny load hanging on the end of the truss and notice now we have four reactions two horizontal reactions and two vertical reactions in our analysis to consider as always we show positive x and y directions and to solve these static trusses we would apply newton's first law summating forces in the x direction in the y direction and moments about a particular point on the truss structure so free body diagrams of plane trusses here. So a free body diagram here of a beam in bending. So the scenario shown here is a shaft supported in bearings, the end. And we have applied load into the shaft due to the tensions in the belt wrapped around the pulley. So this would be the applied load in here, shown with this arrow. And we're reacting this load on the bearings that ends A and C here. Again, this is a static analysis, so we'd be applying Newton's first law, summation of all the forces equal to zero, summation of all the moments about a point equals to zero. We've analysed such problems in previous presentations. Free body diagram, examples continued. Applied load in here to our simply supported beam through these four point loads. We also have a uniformly distributed load along the entire length of the beam acting downwards. And the reaction shown here, R1 and R2. Again, to solve this, we'll be using static equilibrium, summation of the upward forces equals summation of the downward forces, summation of the anti-clockwise moments equals summation of the clockwise moments about any particular point on the beam. Free body diagram, examples continued. Again, from our previous work, we're considering here impended motion up an inclined plane. Have our body here being pulled at the incline. On the right hand side, we have the free body diagram. Applied force P, weight force of the body, and the reaction force, friction force, shown down the incline because the impending motion is up here and our normal reaction force from the inclined plane on our body. More complicated free body diagram here because we need to resolve forces parallel and perpendicular to the incline to undertake the analysis. This would again be a static equilibrium condition because the body is just about to move up the incline. So we apply Newton's first law here. This section is purely for interest 
I've included some further examples of free body diagrams and the ones that follow have been extracted from industrial reports. They've actually formed part of analyses within industry. So free body diagram examples continued. This is a portal frame, kind of frames you sometimes see in warehouses. And the applied load for this frame is along this side of the roof. It's actually a suction on the roof, which sometimes happens with wind pressure applied one side suction occurs on the other so the actual net effect here is an outward force so the reactive system is shown here these vertical stanchions are assumed pinned at the base here so these are the reactions actually along the stanchions and these are the horizontal forces on the stanchions this is a very complicated example and so it was analysed using standard formulae from a valid reference source. Free body diagram examples continued. Here we have a curved arch. This is the arch shown here. Here the applied loading is a uniformly distributed load applied to the curved arch. These arrows simulating the uniformly distributed load. And here's the reactive system on the free body diagram. Vertical reaction shown here and here, and of course, horizontal forces shown here and here. It's fairly obvious from looking at the diagram that the actual value of the HA force is in the opposite sense. But sometimes when undertaking analysis with multiple load cases, we show the reactive forces in one particular direction. And then from the analysis, if the values calculated for the reactions become negative, it just means that the force is actually in the opposite direction. So with the applied load omega shown on this curved arch, from our calculations we'd expect HB to be positive, but HA would actually be a negative value because we'd expect the reaction to be acting in the opposite direction. Free body diagram examples continued. Here's a circular arch down here. As with the previous curved arch we've got an externally applied load in the form of a udl so it's a pressure loading on the surface here and again we're assuming pin dens for our reactions here and here and again we're showing the vertical reaction labeled rv1 at this point here rv2 at this point here and then our horizontal reactions rh1 and rh2 so that's a circular arch but it's during the applied pressure simulated by a uniformly distributed load. Free body diagram examples continued. Here's an example of a pin jointed plane truss. It's a two dimensional truss here. If I recall correctly, this was actually part of a windbreak structure that was used when loading aircraft wing sets that had just been assembled onto the transporter aircraft. As the wings being loaded had quite a large frontal area, then if there was any significant wind on the runway, obviously could cause problems with the actual loading of the wing sets onto the transporter plane. So these wind brakes were used to alleviate any problem in that sense. So this is actually one side of the wind brake and it's analysed this as pin jointed plane truss. So here are the applied loads we were supplied with. These are actually in pounds force. And here's the reactive system we assumed for the structure. So a free body diagram there of our two dimensional analysis. Free body diagram examples continued. This was actually a pipe support arrangement used on a proving loop, which was associated with a small assembly on a drilling rig. So on this structure, we have an applied load here, P, and it's reacted through this stanchion here, half P, and this stanchion here, half P. Initially, we were trying to analyze the raw steel angle, one of these sections here, due to bending. So we assume that half of the applied force P was reacted by one angle. So this is the loading on one angle only. On the free body diagram here, the applied load on one angle is half P. Here are the reactions applied either end, P upon four. Again, if we wanted to, we could apply the hash marks to these reactions. 
So as was stated at the beginning of the presentation, sometimes we use multiple free body diagrams to analyze a particular structure. The left hand sketch shows the free body diagram of the entire structure. And the right hand sketch here shows the free body diagram of the top part of the structure only. Free body diagram example is continued. Here's the analysis of a lintel. Here's the lintel. And a lintel is essentially a beam, often used in buildings to span openings in the building construction where doors or windows may be located. In this particular case, the applied loading was due to bricks. And we're assuming this quantity of bricks was applied to the lintel. Essentially, the applied loading is shown here with this varying linear loading, as it's sometimes termed, across the lintel. And on the free body diagram here, we assume we have vertical reactions at the end, as you'd expect, and also the fixing moments in the wall. Again, this is quite a complicated analysis. So in this particular case, we wanted to calculate the maximum bending moment in the beam. And the maximum bending moment actually occurs at positions A and B, the encaster ends of the beam. And as this is a statically indeterminate analysis, we refer to standard formulae to calculate the maximum bending moment calculated here. And here is the standard formula used for the maximum bending moment for reference. Free body diagram examples continued. This actually was a verification example for a matrix analysis package, which is basically three two dimensional beam elements. So, unlike the truss structures that only withstand tension or compression, these elements here can actually accommodate tension, compression, bending, and shear. So, for this model, we have four nodes in the model, and in node two, we have our applied loads labeled P here, W, and also an applied concentrated couple, all applied at node two. And our reactive system in node one here, we have a vertical reaction, a horizontal reaction, and a fixing moment. And the same at node three here, we have a vertical reaction, a horizontal reaction, and a reactive couple or moment. But at node four, we just assumed a vertical reaction. So quite a complicated free body diagram there. Static indeterminate structures, so it needs to be analyzed by more complicated methods. And in this particular case, it was a stiffness matrix method of analysis. Here's what was termed the covered gangway installation. This was used at a harbor many years ago to load and unload passengers from ships. This is the gangway steelwork structure itself. This is removing all the cladding. This was a structure you would see. And here's the free body diagram for this gangway example. In this case, we considered a total downward force. That's the weight whilst concurrently experiencing a side wind force. And this is the reactive system at the left hand end of the gangway and the reactive system here at the right hand end of the gangway. So again, a very complicated analysis here to determine the reaction for the system. Just notice that the bracing bars are not shown here on this particular sketch for clarity purposes. Here's an axis tower and platform. On the left hand side here we have three storage tanks were installed on site and then later it's decided that the valves at the top of the tanks, these are the valves up here, would need to be serviced. So the company decided they needed to erect a steelwork tower with a platform around these three storage tanks. They're not a very good picture. This is the tower and platform that was erected. You can just see it here in sort of silhouette out, outline. So this is the platform at the top. And these were two towers 
that the operators would climb up to the platform and then they could access the valves at the top of the tanks here. It's a very poor illustration I know but it gives you some idea of what the what the context is here. So this is a free body diagram the top of the tower. The applied load in here is a uniformly distributed load. This was stated in a specification. It's what the maximum loading could be on the top of the tower. And for this particular illustration these are the reactions in the tower members. Free body diagram continued here. Here is the loading that was applied to the side of the tower. This relates to wind loading calculated for the maximum wind speed expected in this particular location. Again from appropriate standards. This is a two dimensional lattice structure that was designed. Free body diagram continued here. And this shows an extract here of the applied loading enlarged here. For clarity, this is the reactive system of loading assumed in this tower analysis. This structure was analysed many, many years ago before computers were really prevalent in the design office. So this was analysed by hand. So this is part of the actual analysis undertaken here. The tower was actually solved using techniques such as resolution at a joint or method of sections. In later years, it, the analysis was actually checked purely for interest using a finite element model. And as was mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, with some complex analyses, more than one free body diagram is required. And that was the case with this tower analysis. This slide shows the free body diagram of one side of a complete tower. But this slide shows you two separate free body diagrams that were used as the analysis of the forces within the various tower members unfolded. So on the left hand free body diagram here are the applied loads and here are the reactive loads in the members. On the right hand free body diagram here are the applied loads. It's the increased lengths of tower here that we're considering. Again here are the reactive loads in the various members of the tower. Free body diagram examples continued. This is a wing rib structure. It's actually one rib in the aircraft wing. The applied load is shown in this direction here. And this was the reactive system of loading. This is the reaction in the upper wing skin, reaction in the lower wing skin, and reaction in what was termed the spar web here. And the reactions were given to us in that particular orientation. And you might say straight away that the upper reaction would be in the other direction given the applied loading. But essentially there were hundreds of load cases applied to this particular structure. So in some low cases the applied loading was as shown. In other low cases the applied loading was in the opposite sense. So the reactions would occur in the opposite sense. So again from an analysis point of view if a reaction is shown to be negative from the calculations. It simply means it's in the opposite direction. So you can use this particular system of, of loading as given here on the free body and then decide which direction the loads are in from the positive or negative value for a particular applied load or reaction. And that's the way engineers often work when they have multiple load cases on structures such as with design of aircraft. Free body examples continued here. This is a quite a crude analysis here of what's called a jack bracket structure. Again, it's on the trailing edge of a wing structure. And this is a location where the jack that moves the spoiler or the aileron is located. This was actually analysis undertaken in the design stage where we didn't have any models available and very little finite element um, analysis could be undertaken at this stage of the design process. But but we had to progress the design as quickly as we could. So this particular analysis was to determine the loading that would be placed on the fasteners within this region of the jack bracket for positions effectively. 
So we generated a very, very crude model here. This was the model. This was the pin through the jack actuator. These members here were assumed to have the effective stiffness of the jack bracket. So I said, this is a very crude analysis. It was just something to provide us with an indication of what loading might be coming off the, the upper and lower flanges of the jack bracket and what loading we had to get into the wing structure. So here's the jack bracket finite element model that was used here. So this was the applied loading shown here. Going here on the finite element model. And as you can see at these particular nodes here, this was the reactive loading at these nodes here. And there are six degrees of freedom at each of these positions. So six unknowns essentially that needs to be calculated. We have the translation directions. So we have the rotations then about each of those axes. So these were the actual values that were calculated from a very crude finite element model at each of the positions on our structure. And I said it was just a crude analysis to try and give us some indication as to the loading that had to be transferred through the fasteners and then into the wing. So these illustrations are quite complicated, trying to show you real free body diagrams that are used in industry. Engineers have to consider when undertaking, in this case, analysis of aircraft structures. So I hope this presentation has been of some interest to you in illustrating free body diagrams. And as always, thank you for viewing.